It's a nice day today and I've been cleaning up my container over the weekend so I thought to myself let's get rid of some junk. Well it's not really junk, it's junk to me because I never use it. Uh, and they want rebuilding, things that want rebuilding. Now as you know I'm making my vapour blaster but that's come to a, a sort of a temporary halt because I can't get the sheet metal bent. Um, but it doesn't stop us from stripping things down. And a couple of things in the shop that in the container that I found was a two and a quarter five bearing petrol engine uh, and corresponding gearbox believe it or not the thing was it's been in there for years and we only used it once uh, to put into the car to go to the United States so it could cross the border then we got it sent back because uh, it originally had a 300 TDI in and customs didn't want that so we had to take it out and <laughs> put this petrol engine in um, and it's never run since. It's never done anything. So, I thought it's not going to be long till I get my vapour blaster going. But I might just uh, pull this apart. I've got plenty of room once I get tidied up. And then uh, start to rebuild it. So I'm going to take it to bits and get it on the engine frame uh, and see what it's like. I think it's a good one. I really do. But it might be handy for somebody who's got a series truck who wants to have a bit more pep and a five-speed gearbox and just drop the whole bloody lot in because I don't want an exchange. Ah, More work, eh? So what we're going to do now is take off the flywheel and the adapter and then we're going to bolt on my second engine uh, carrier. Um, and then we can start to take this to bits. What fun! I put a bit of uh, penetrating oil around here, around the, where the crankshaft is, because it, it is pretty rusty. Uh, we're quite blessed with the holes that go through the flywheel, for the, that hold the clutch on, go all the way through. So what I'm going to try this time, I've got some big spreader washers, which are touching the outside and touching the flywheel, and hopefully we can jar it loose, because tapping it with a hammer at the back isn't really the best of ideas. So. Let's see if we can do that. Well, it's got some tension on it now. Is it moving? I don't know. I think so. We need a hammer. Whoa! Flying off now. Didn't even need a hammer. Need some new bolts now. That's it. And don't worry about the threads. The bolts will snap before I blow the threads out. Yeah, you can see where it's moved round here. So we'll put a couple of longer bolts in. See if we can wiggle it out. Hey, look at that. First time every time. So you can see uh, it's not too oily. There's a little bit of oil down there, but it's going to get new seals in anyway. This housing's been sprayed with oil. So we're going to take all this lot off and put all the bolts into another bag. If you want a top tip, when your missus is going to throw these out of the freezer, you know, you've had your sausage in it or something like that, grab them, wash them, put them on the washing line, let them dry, and use them again for nuts and bolts. Don't go buying them, waste the money that. But the beauty about the bag is, you can lose all the bolts in one fell swoop, rather than losing individual ones. There's a top tip for you. It's like a key ring. It's, it's, a key ring's a device to lose all your keys at once. It's good, isn't it? Right, let's get this off. Right, now using a rubber mallet, I'm going to tap this off. There we go. It's on some dowels there, you see. So that's a piece off. You can see how nice and clean it is at the back here. I don't think this has done many miles. Uh, just a quick thing before I change my battery. 
that you might be interested in knowing, I don't know, maybe, maybe not. All the dimensions of the Land Rover, engine, gearbox, whatever, is all worked off this face here. So once you've worked this where this is, putting different engines and doing conversions and making adapters, is easy. That's something they don't teach in the manuals. So I've got the engine on the second engine stand I've got, and I really don't like these stands, I'll show you it later. Uh, it's got like spidery legs at the back, which is sort of universal, but I think in the future I'll make my own stand. Because it's a lot better balanced. This, if you take the pin out, it'll just whoop straight down and you can catch it by surprise. Um, as it did with me. <laughs> so, how did I get it on the stand? Well, up there in the ceiling, up there, I've got a hook fastened to the plasterboard. No, not really, the steel beam goes all the way through the shop. Uh, so now we're going to start to take bits and pieces apart. Uh, as you can see probably over there, I've cleaned off all the bench. So we're going to take bits off and just lay them out and get this stripped down as quickly as we can. Uh, nothing really to report about stripping it down, apart from being careful with the bolts. You know, you don't want to snap these thermostat housing bolts. But basically just take them off. And the beauty about this is it's basically all cast iron. So I think what I'll do first of all is take off the manifold. That's easy. Take off the rocker box. Take off all these ancillaries on the sides. Till we get down to the nitty gritty. Got to be interesting, eh? So nothing to report so far apart from there's quite a bit of rust in here. I'm not sure what I'm going to expect. So now I'm going to take the rocker box off and let's have a look. I ran out of Ziploc bags, I had to go down the shop and get some. There we go. Ooh, that's got oil in it. That's a good sign. That's a good sign. And it's that black, smelly, petroly type oil. Now, what the, the, the funniest thing about these engines is, well it's not funny, but to get the head bolts off you've also got to take the rocker shaft off because the rocker shaft is held on uh, with head bolts. So what we're going to do to prevent any sort of further damage, we're going to take the head bolts off in opposite directions to put, to put them on. Usually you start in the middle and work outwards, but not in this instance. We're going to, we're going to just pull them off. But first thing we're going to do is take off these... Uh, what them? Oh, they're uh, half uh, five sixteenth UNF bolts out of this support, and then we'll take the head bolts off, and then we'll have a look inside. With all the bolts out, a little old trick to take the rocker shaft off for the, without it going ping is to turn the rocker shaft box upside down and bolt it through this way, and hopefully that shaft will come off just like that. Look. Easy, isn't it? I've left one bolt in. I don't know what. Oh, I'll put that in later. So next, we're going to put our push rods in order. Take these out, put them in order, and we'll see about getting this head off. Now we've got re we're ready to take the head off. Now sometimes they're easy, sometimes they're difficult. It depends what type of gasket you're going to use. Um, before we do that, let's have a look round this way. Oops, not over there. Here. <laughs> uh, spark plugs are all taken out because we had to get them out to get the bolts out. The cover plates are off. Notice this was an electric fuel pump so there was no uh, pump on this side. There was just a blank plate. Um, take the oil pipe that goes from the, top, from the bottom of the block to the top and put the bolts back in the holes again so you don't lose them because it's really important. Uh, that's about it really. A couple of little brackets to take off. That can go. Right, let's prise this head off. Oh, there you go. Yes, it did have a composite gasket on it. So, you know, it is a 2.5. It's, uh, it's not a 2.5, it's a two and a quarter. So anyway, let's take this off and get it on the bench. Oops. Oops. Oops, oops. Water's got in it. Oops. Double loops. Sorry about this, I'm not messing about changing camera here. Let's have a look. 
Oops. Water. Hmm. That's going to be fun to get out. Look at the humidity in this cylinder. Looks like it's going to have to have a rebore. I don't think we've polished that out. The thing is, can we turn it over? That is the question. That is... This was when we, when we laid this engine up, funnily enough, we got a product that was... Uh, you'd sprayed into the air intake and it would protect everything inside. Obviously that didn't work, did it? Well, isn't that going to be fun to get out? So... Mm -hmm. We can get the lifters out, take them out, put them into separate plastic bags. And uh, then we'll take the crank off. Uh, I was going to take the crank off by taking the sump off and, and uh, jamming it up. I'm actually, we might just do that. Uh, I was just waiting for all the oil to drip out. Mm -hmm. 